Zoe and I'm a vet. More than that, I'm a busy working mum. Hi mum. And a pet owner. Here's the place to come for tips and advice about your pets. I've got a question for you. Do you worm your pets? If not, why not? I'm here to tell you how and why you should be. My cat has always been sick. Ugh. My doggy's got diarrhea. So stinky. My doggy has worms in his poo. Ugh. Our doggy won't eat her food. And she just does stinky farts. <laughs> just some of the many symptoms that a pet with worms may have. Let's have a look at some of the most likely worms to infect your pets. An infection of roundworms could be dreadful for your pet. Symptoms include sickness and diarrhea. I know this is gross, but you might even see the worms in the sick or the poo. And you know what they look like? Cooked spaghetti. Puppies and kittens will become infected during pregnancy or when nursing from the mother, but adult animals can be infected from eggs in the environment. Left untreated, your animal could begin to lose weight, to have a poor coat, a lack of energy, and develop a pot belly. <laughs> in puppies and kittens, infection can be very severe and it can lead to intestinal obstruction and even death. <coughs> if that makes you shiver, you should be aware that if you come into contact with contaminated soil or pet poo, you too could become infected. <gasps> so, what can we do to prevent this? You must make sure you dispose of your pet's poo properly and always wash your hands thoroughly. Try to prevent your children playing from anywhere that could have been contaminated with pet poo, especially sand pits. Keep them covered. Even once you've removed the poo, their eggs can stay in the sand and infect your children. If you do any gardening, wear gloves and always wash raw fruit and vegetables. With your children, it's also a good idea to keep the nails short so that the eggs can't get underneath. So now I want to talk to you about tapeworms. The most likely way your pet will become infected with a tapeworm is by eating a tiny, tiny flea when they're grooming. This is why it's so important that you deflea your pets as well as worming them. The other ways that pets can contract tapeworms is by eating raw food and from catching rodents. If you need help, then dial your operator. One ingested, the tapeworm's head attaches to your pet's gut and it grows and grows in segments. These segments are full of eggs and are passed in the faeces. You might see them stuck to your pet's bum. They look like grains of rice. You may also see them on top of the poop or on your pet's bed. The good news is, in this country, you'd be fairly unlikely to catch a tapeworm unless you ingested a flea. However, if you're interested, I suggest you look up the Chinese man who had a 20 metre tapeworm in his stomach. It was pretty gross. So, to summarise, we've got spaghetti for the roundworms and rice for the tapeworms. Anyone else not feeling hungry? <laughs> I know I've thrown a lot of information at you, but the take home message is a pet with worms may be okay, some mild sickness, or may be really ill, but the point is they need to be treated. <laughs> The best and most effective way to prevent any of this nastiness is to regularly deworm your pet dogs and cats using a trustworthy product. You'll read online about homemade remedies, but they're not proven to work, so be mindful of this before you do so. I like to use the itch wormer. It's a combination of ingredients designed to kill all the worms we've talked about and more in a tasty tablet. What's more, if you sign up to itch, it will be regularly delivered to your door, so you'll never forget again. Wormers have no residual activity, and for this reason, you'll need to keep worming your pet. We would recommend a minimum of every three months. However, in some circumstances, if you have a young pet, they eat raw food, or they're prolific hunters, more regular worming may be necessary for you. And if you get in touch, we can work out the best option for you. This is Clifford, one of my lovely boxers. He's 10 years old and we're gonna give him an itch wormer. <laughs> Clifford's a big dog, so we're gonna give him an extra large wormer. He's quite compliant, so we're just gonna pop it in his food. Let's see how this goes down. Huh? Simple as that. Good boy. <laughs> this 
is Lola, she's an eight year old Cocker Spaniel. So now we're going to give Lola her worming tablet. She's a bit cleverer than Clifford and a little fussier, so we can't hide it in her food, but she'll do anything for a cheese sandwich. Come here, Lols. So Maggie is quite a fussy dog and she's difficult to tablet. She will not be bought under any circumstances with cheese or by hiding in the food. So sometimes it's just quickest and easiest to just pop the tablet to the back of your dog's mouth and I'll show you how to do this. Just gently open her mouth, take the tablet, put it in the back and then close her mouth. If you give her chin a rub then she should swallow. Good girl! Some people tell us they're worried about giving a tablet in this way but as you can see it's quick and easy and Maggie and your pets will be absolutely fine. One thing you need to remember is to always give your pet the correct dosage of medication as accidentally overdosing them can be dangerous. This is Dobby and he's our two year old Sphinx cat but he doesn't think he's a cat, he's more like a dog, he's absolutely bonkers and we absolutely love him. I'm just going to show you now how easy it is to give Dobby his itch worming pill by opening his mouth and popping it to the back of his throat. If you've got a cat that's quite wriggly and won't take a tablet direct into the mouth, I'm going to show you another technique of how you can administer it. Just take the tablet and crush it between two spoons and then hide it in something really tasty and pungent like some fish paste or I'm going to use a yogurty treat. Before I go, I just wanted to answer a question I get asked a lot as a vet. Can I catch worms from kissing my pet? The short answer is yes. I don't wish to deprive your pets of love, but no tongues. Until next time, bye bye. <laughs> You'd come and stick your tongue in right at the appropriate time, didn't you?